So this is one of the things that I love most about running a film festival. It's that's when you get to talk to the directors and learn a little bit more about their processes, the way that they've come about their film, the, um, and you get to, to meet the storytellers of our generation. So here's the question and answer session. Can you please introduce yourself, tell us the name of your film, and tell us a little bit about your film. Hi everyone, so my name is Arturo Bandinelli. I'm the director of the short film Soma. Soma is a, uh, an experimental uh, dance film which um, thinks about the um, origin of, of the human body. It's a kind of myth of origin of the human body. My name is Andrei Stoyan. I'm the director of the film The Usual Story of Aurel Lacroix. And uh, this is a film about, um, about violence in all its forms and uh, about the way a victim is transformed into an aggressor. Well, my name is uh, Anastasia Serogina. I'm a director. Um, and this film is about everyday choices, let's see. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jacob Pola from Turkey in Istanbul. Uh, I'm a director and producer of Them and Walking. Uh, we also call it DMW, more easily. Um, yeah, I'm 24. Uh, then I'm working with one of my first project. It was a graduation project in South Korea. I graduated my college in South Korea. So yeah, that's me. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Gaspar Vignon. Um, I live in Switzerland and work as a film director, also musician and also producer in uh, the company named uh, Marmot Production. Um, and I uh, just made a short film, um, The Moon Rises, uh, <laughs> which you have seen, and uh, which tells us a little bit about um, a true story, the story of a um, musician uh, who lived uh, at the end of the 19th and first half of the 20th century and uh, we had a really Romanesque life. Uh, my name is Stéphane Berla. I'm a director. I do animation and also live action. And um, I made uh, some music videos. Um, I love this format. Um, it's, uh, I love uh, mixing music with image. What is the genesis of the film? How did it come about? Was this like sitting in the bath and looking at your your toes coming out of the water and looking like wrinkled prunes? Or how did the story come about? I had this uh, thinking about when somebody did something wrong around me, I was thinking, okay, but why did he or she do it? And uh, I tried to find who is responsible for that. But I always got to uh, maybe his mother, father, grandmother, people around and so on, and I could never find the guilty one. Who's responsible for all of this? And I think this just goes on and on for, for, for generation after generation, all the way to the Big Bang. <laughs> and um, yeah, I try to point out that there is, I think there is no uh, answer for this and there's no guilty one because people usually try to find out who's guilty and play the judge, okay, it's you. And yeah, blame everything on that person, but this is a little more complex. The concept of the film was developed in collaboration with Quant Collective, uh, which is a collective of dance artists based in London. So they asked me to collaborate on a project with them. The collective is formed by uh, Claudia Wittmann, Esme Benjamin, and Amir Elish. So we met and started thinking about uh, making, making, a, making, making some work together. Um, and in particular, we started from a research question, which was, what is the body? Um, and uh, what can a body do? Um, how can we think about it together? Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not just a girl's story as it can be seen. Uh, it's more about people in general uh, and their choices. So, uh, what would you choose? Your career or your family? Uh, can you risk it all uh, and throw uh, something away if you worked so hard uh, on your career, for example? Uh, or if uh, everyone uh, uh, is against you, would you fight for, um, uh, for people or for things uh, you really uh, believe in? 
And I guess the main question is, uh, can you have it all? It's really two things. It's just the piece of music that yeah. we hear uh, in the real cell and then at the end uh, in full uh, completion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, music that just uh, touched me deeply um, and profoundly and which I felt it was connected with his life, his, his biography, his, his path of life. For those of us who, who delve and dive into the technical bits of a film, how long did it take to shoot and edit your film? Mm, no, I think it took one week or two just so I can imagine the concept. I offer something, they say yes. Um, we study a bit how to do it, but the um, directing, the fabrication of the music video, yeah, it was two months. So in two months, we did everything. Um, I didn't have the storyboard yet, so there was, it was from the storyboard to the final image. It was uh, two months because uh, the goal was to release a music video before Christmas. Um, because there was a new album going uh, that will be that had to be released, so it was necessary to do it in two months. It uh, was uh, a very long journey, uh, frankly speaking, because um, uh, then I put it, you know, as a note and I wrote it uh, because I'm a screenwriter too as well. Um, it was uh, about a year or, or, or two, uh, when I just uh, uh, couldn't decide should I, uh, should I, um, you know, perform it or not, uh, because uh, the world has changed dramatically, uh, and I wasn't sure about um, can I can I uh, talk about such private, small things, you know? Uh, because it's not about world in general. It's not about um, some um, big events. It's more about private life um, and your personal affection. Um, but I decided that uh, if it can be um, important for me, so it can be important for other people um, as well. So I guess it was about uh, two or three years. And from the moment we decided to make a film together to the moment when we started filming, um, almost one year had passed. I mean, that included, you know, finding uh, money to make the film um, and, you know, going through the pre-production. Then it took us about a week to shoot the film and about another seven to eight months to complete the post-production. It was a very, a very long process. It, of, it is often the case when you're working with um, limited budgets um, and also when you are sort of doing the film in a way that um, that is not primarily for commercial release and so you don't have the same deadlines as say when you have a uh, a particular kind of uh, commercial release in mind. As I told you, we filmed in two other countries, so it took about six to seven months. The shooting was quite short because we had money, but not enough we wished for because it's a um, historic film with costumes and a lot of things that cost. Uh, quite much, but we had still enough money to do something, so we did it, and uh, it was shot in like three days and a half. Making a film is a laborious, tedious, wondrous experience. Can you tell us a little antidote, a happy, sad, funny story about making your film? There is an um, interesting point. It was right at the beginning of the first shooting day. To give you a little of backstory, we have in this film the, the skull of the, of the bull that you saw and um, the co-producer uh, got it from a slaughterhouse where they would have already have it and they would have thrown it away so it's not for the film. And um, 
he gave it to me the day before the first day of shooting and he said you have to put it in water otherwise it will get uh, dry and smelly so i put it in my bathtub and i just forgot about it we had so much work to do so much to prep and then the morning i woke up after like three hours of sleep barely awake i went to the bathroom it was dark the sun was not up I turn on the light and I, the first thing I see is a huge <laughs> skull in, in my bathtub. I just frozen. I, I didn't remember why is there, why is it, is it real? And that's like the point where the story of the film mixed in with the reality. I saw the head, I saw Aurel, I saw him dissected in my house. <laughs> yeah, it's where the two worlds mixed together. Uh, the final scene, the final scene uh, at the garage, the parking garage, uh, the final scene, uh, we really broke the wall actually. So yeah, it was a really uh, fun story while we were filming. Um, after that, uh, in Turkey, actually no one in professional actor actually, it, he, he was my dad actually, the Turkish boss. He was my dad and the other guys, my cousin. So it was a hard to train them to actoring and something like that. So I enjoyed that and I really learned a lot of things while making the DMW. Life is about learning and um, lessons learned. And often they're hard, difficult lessons that we, um, we take with us for the rest of our lives to make us better and hopefully easier. Um, did you learn any lessons from making your film? Um, I think with this with this film in particular, um, there was something around uh, collaboration, which was very important uh, to me. Um, I had collaborated with choreographers and dancers and other filmmakers before, but in this case, um, I think the 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 way this collaboration with Pan Collective unfolded was. Um, was different than it had been before. I never really, um, it was constructed from the bottom up. And so we had to go through so many different stages. Um, and uh, it just reminded me that it is very important to trust the people you collaborate with and to um, to allow other ideas to uh, merge with your own and try and sort of perhaps the way I, I see making films or directing now uh, is more around asking the right questions to people than trying to force in your answers. I think the, the maybe the main um, thing I learned it's about um, going with the flow. Um, usually, I'm very I'm, I like to control a lot my productions. Uh, I like having very accurate ideas uh, about what I want. Um, with the time, I learned to trust more and more the people um, I work with. For example, I started to learn more about the actors um, because when I discovered that when I try to control my actors, they play badly because they need space, they need to feel the things. And progressively, I learned to to do the same with my team, to give them space, um, especially on this one. Because this one, I really need to go fast. It was about a film about creativity, and I wanted everybody to feel well and to add ideas so we could build together. And even if at the moment we don't go in the direction I expected, I just decided to accept it and to build always, never, the idea was to never going back. You're competing with dozens of other independent filmmakers. You're great independent filmmakers from all around the world. How does that make you feel to compete here at ECU 2024? I'm flattered to be here. Yeah. You know, in uh, such beautiful and fantastic place. Um, and I thank you for having me because uh, present our work um, in such a unique atmosphere is very inspiring. Uh, and you know, this film uh, celebrates uh, some sort of courage. 
and hunger for integrity. Uh, and I happy to share it because I really believe that's not about you know some uh, small local or private thing. Um, I'm happy I can share it with people uh, and you that it can push the limits away, maybe just, you know, uh, push it harder. No, I'm really excited about that. And I'm really excited about the, the, the showing the, the movie to, to, to the public. Um, also, I think I was always that feeling since the beginning, this movie is quite maybe too much classical for the, the, the festivals, uh, for the festival's mood actually and so. But on the other case, uh, I, we have, uh, we had, um, for example, uh, a public screening in the village where we shoot it and so on. Um, um, and I saw also how much the, the, the public reacts to the, to the movie, uh, which was for me really important because it, it's, it means, okay, it works. And I tried to, to tell something, to tell some emotions and it works. So for me, the most important is just yeah, to 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 make the movie um, uh, alive because yeah. otherwise it is not alive. So for me, it's just the most important. Yeah.